Hello everyone and welcome back to Chaputi Jams, the only video series dedicated to Chapuchi heroes. Say, spelled the same, said differently. I'm here with Zenrut. Hello. And I'm Loki, and that was the first time I've ever done the intro to Chaputi Jams perfectly. <laughs> There's always a first time for everything. Yes, and I also realized that I'm using the wrong image. This is the to be released image. One moment, that's Modcast. That is uh, my dog. <laughs> Damn, that's old. Uh, that is a blank screen. Where is my Where's my Jimpooty? Hold on, everyone. <laughs> I, I I found it. <laughs> I found the Jimpooty. <laughs> yeah, the, the Modcast thing was back from when we did the April Fool's joke. <laughs> so it really is old. I was like, I put this on scene four. I need to rename scene four to Jimpooty Jams. But anyway, we're here after it's been a bit because we were super busy, but we're finally here to talk about the super special event that Zen has been waiting for. That's right. Buso Rankin is in the game now. Well, they're already in the game, but yes. it's a celebration now. It's a celebration. It's also the celebration is also ending in a couple days, but it's all right. It's plenty of time for Buso Rankin because they were able to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters from Buso Rankin. Nine if you consider a duo character as two characters in one, but at least eight. And they got some interesting dudes here that I can't wait to talk about um, with Zen. So. Yeah, so Buso Rankin. So let me tell you what I think Buso Rankin is about, Zen. I think Buso Rankin okay. is about uh, cowboy bounty hunting. Am I right? No. Nowhere, no. Okay. Not Monster even hunting. remotely close. Monster hunting. Yes, yeah, sort of. Okay. That is about all I've got for you in terms of Booster Rankin. I had actually thought okay. it was like some kind of Wild West bounty hunting show up until I saw the Moonface Man. <laughs> No, and then so I, said, I have no idea what the show's about anymore. <laughs> Buso Rankin is about um, it's basically it starts out as straight up monster hunting, mm -hmm. where um, there's this organization called the Alchemist Army, and they have these items called Kakugane, mm -hmm. um, and when you use one, it turns into what's called a Buso Rankin, which is like it's basically like a Oh. Um, so That's anyone that uses a Kakugane, it will result in their specific Buso Renkin, whatever it is. And if you use like a different kind of Kakugane, you'll get roughly the same weapon, but it'll look a little different. So like each one's a little bit different. Like at one point, um, Kazuki, who's the protagonist, he, uh, uses two different ones at the same time. And so like one, it looks different. They function the same, but it looks a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. And then they fight against these things called homunculuses, or homunculi, I guess, which are like technologically uh, enhanced life forms that eat people. Mm. So, like, humans are turned into homunculus by putting this core inside of them that eventually infects them and turns them into a monster. And then, like, low level homunculus are like animals. They're, they're like, giant frogs and giant gorillas and stuff or like big giant snakes and mm -hmm. then the more humanoid they look the stronger they are so it's sort of like yu yu Hakusho in that regard where like gotcha. the most powerful demons just look like people not like demons um and so like that's what the moon face man is he's a homunculus that would explain it okay moon face man yeah. looks like a villain he doesn't look like a <laughs> he he's a bad guy yeah okay um Papillon is a homunculus. Yes, the man who has like <laughs> butterfly stuff and an X on his crotch. Yes. Okay, so yeah. his whole thing is that he uh, is like this sickly dying child who wants to be uh, a homunculus because he's going to die from whatever his anime cancer is. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. it's just, it just says he's sick. Um, and so he, yeah, he makes like homunculus on people to test it out. Um, and he ends up infecting Tokiko with one. And so Kazuki has to fight him to get the antidote. Uh, which he does. And he thinks that he kills him, but he actually does become a homunculus in time. But instead of like being the arch nemesis for the series, they kind of develop like a friendly relationship. Sort of. Mm. They're they're they have like the uh you're the only one that understands me sort of relationship. Cause like Papillon's whole thing was that no one ever really saw him when he was alive because he was just like a sickly nobody. 
Mm -hmm. And even like his family didn't really remember him because he had a twin brother that was like the successful one that was going to get to live and be the family heir and everything while he was fated to die from his anime cancer. So like his family didn't give a shit about him because they were all rich assholes. Mm. Um, So when he transforms, he ends up like killing his family and eating his brother and everything. Um, Jesus. Yeah. And so then Kazuki fights him, but then he becomes kind of enamored with Kazuki. Not like maybe actually maybe romantic. I don't know. They don't really go into it <laughs> other than like, he's an anime weirdo. Booster um, Rankin did not last long enough for it to be considered romantic. No, it didn't. It didn't pan out. But like, uh, because Kazuki calls him by name, um, he, he views him as like the first person to actually see him. And so he's the only person, Kazuki's the only person that Papillon will let call him by name. Everyone else has to call him Papillon, but Kazuki is allowed to use his actual name. All right. Fair enough. Very interesting relationship. Yeah, this seems very interesting. For people who don't know, this was the follow up to uh, Rioni Kenshin, and it did not do as well. It did suffer the fate of many jump series, which was that it was canceled out of nowhere <laughs> because it, it was not... it was canceled at a weird time because it wasn't canceled in that like uh buffer window where like up oh, chapter 20 you get out mm-hmm. you know um i think it got canceled in the 80s yeah it, I think yeah got it about, got canceled like... in 82 chapters total yeah um a weird number with a, a very weird number to cancel that but it, it was able to run long enough that its ending is satisfactory, I think. Like, you could read it, and you might think it's short, but I wouldn't think that you uh, would necessarily go, oh, this got canceled. Mm-hmm. It's not like Robot X Laser Beam, where they literally were just like, mid, the next mid. round of the tournament, the series <laughs> is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah mid like, turning it just ends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just stops. Um, it's not like that. It, there's a resolution, the story concludes, It's uh, it's good. Interesting. All right. I was debating uh, reading it, but I ended up not because it's been fucking busy everywhere. But I am interested in it now because of, maybe it is because fully because of Moonface. And also, no, actually, Captain Bravo. I think I took one look at Captain Bravo and said, maybe I should read this. Yeah, okay. So Captain Bravo is one of the best characters. He looks like he one is... of the best characters. So his his outfit is actually his Buso Rankin. It's called the Silver Skin, <laughs> and it's an impenetrable shield, basically. Perfect. Um, yes. So, and, and then when he uses different ones, he gets like different style. Like he gets a uh, like a monk outfit and like a pirate one. Um, when he uses different Buso Rex, so he's not always a cowboy. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he has like different moves he can use with it. Like he can put it on other people to protect them, and then he can also put it on other people and use it almost like a straight jacket where it's called like the silver skin reverse where he puts it on you. And then if you try to attack him, it stops you. Um, he's very cool. He's like a martial artist that wears this big ass cowboy outfit. And he's very like flamboyant, but not see the thing is he's very like extra, but by the standards that this series sets, he's actually not that extra. Cause you have people like Papillon and Moonface. <laughs> um, yeah, to be fair. <laughs> you have those yeah. too. But uh, he he's very like anime spirited. Like to get into the uh, headquarters of an enemy that they're fighting at one point, you have to give the passcode. And the passcode is like this dumbass phrase. Um, the passcode is the legend summon for this event. Really? Um, yeah. And the the picture of it is Tokiko doing her pose, which she hates. Um, and they each do a specific anime pose, um, like a famous anime pose. Mm-hmm. Um, it's which one is it? I know that Tokiko is Sailor Moon, Kazuki is Common Rider. I don't know who Captain Bravo's is. He's just like standing there with his hands on his hips, almost. Uh, well, almost looks guess. like Superman, kind of. Superman, maybe a little um, Sentai-ish. If the maybe, one yeah. side is Common Rider and he's doing, it does. He does. Now that I'm seeing it, it does kind of look like a Superman-esque pose. Yeah, and then yeah, Kazuki's doing Common Rider, and Tokiko's doing uh, Sailor Moon. Um, it's a great thing to use as a legend. Yeah, and it's, it's like this dumbass thing, and Tokiko's whole thing is that she doesn't want to do it, and then Captain Bravo's like, "Oh no, we're fucking doing it." 
<laughs> and they do the whole the whole long ass passcode that's like a it's like a haiku that they all do and then they strike the pose. Um that's great. like he he's also the JoJo reference in this series because they go to the beach and uh when he's surfing, he leans back on the surfboard and he does the Polnareff pose from when he fights Abdul and he <laughs> says bravo. Because that's what Polnareff says too, is he says bravo because he's like taunting uh, Abdul with it. But Captain Bravo just says it because he says it all the time because that's what he goes by. That's not his real name. That's just what he calls himself. <laughs> it's a great name. Uh, all right. Thank you for the explanation of Captain Bravo. Let's get into the actual... So who, let's just go quickly for the free-to-play characters. Um, we got... Th this is maybe the most average-looking of all of them. Sh uh, Shusei Hayasaki? Hayasaka? He, uh, Shusui Hayasaka. Yeah. He is a uh, samurai boy. His Busa Renkin is a Rurouni Kenshin reference. It's called Sword Samurai X. And if you know that Rurouni Kenshin, uh, it's also called Samurai X. Um, is that he's really good at sword fighting, and so his Busa Renkin nullifies energy attacks. So, like, mm. if you try to use like Kazuki's whole thing is that his he has a big lance. If you know from the free to play character, mm -hmm. he has a lance that uses like uh, energy attacks that look like sunlight. So it's called Sunlight Heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy's whole thing is that he nullifies energy attacks with his weapon. So like you have to outfight him. So it's basically built because he's super good at using a sword. It's like his whole thing. Um, he has a super fucked up backstory. Him and the gotcha character that is his sister, Oka, mm -hmm. uh, were kidnapped as little kids and raised by their kidnapper and did not realize it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I forget if she dies or they kill her. That I think she just like... dies. Okay. I think she dies. Um, and then... Yes, okay. So... Their kidnapper was like a weird person who kept making them play marriage, like they're getting married to each other despite being siblings. Mm -hmm. And they had she had this whole thing where like you're not allowed to go outside because again they don't realize they've been kidnapped. They didn't know they were too young. Um, but she tells them never to go outside, obviously because she doesn't want them to get found. Um, she ends up dying, and they don't realize that. Uh, they don't know what death is, so they just sit there with their kidnapper mother's rotting corpse as it's, like, decaying, mm -hmm. and they just keep playing that wedding game together to, like, cope. Um, eventually, the police arrive, and they find out that it's, she was a woman who uh, her their dad, like, cheated on his wife with, and then she uh, stole them, and it was, like, a whole okay. fucking thing. Uh, and eventually they get found by homunculus and they become what's called a familiar, which is like, they're like, it's like the familiars in blade. Like you, you, you serve them for a while and then eventually they'll turn you into one oh, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so they get told to the kill, uh, Kazuki. And... You mean vampire familiars? You mean actual yeah. familiar familiars? I don't know enough about vampires. I just no, know that it's in Blade. No, it's, it's fair enough. Uh, it, it is in Blade, but I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. This is course. a pop culture show, all right? This is not a fair vampire enough. show. Let's talk about, um, okay, let's talk about Dracula, the original 1930s. <laughs> 1939. No, I'm sorry. But yeah, he, uh, he, they get tasked with killing Kazuki and Tokiko, and they go fight, and then they have a change of heart, and they kind of join. Your heart got unbanned, and boom, they join the good side. Yeah, <laughs> they they join the good ones. All right, interesting. And yeah, the sister is a gotcha character, uh, which we'll talk about what she does a little bit later. We'll just go through the free to play guys real quick. The other one is Gauta Nakamura. Nakamura, yeah, that looks like a Nakamura. And from what I got here, he's the other guy who kind of just looks like a dude, except for he has. He's like, uh, he's face. basically just like a simp. Is he a simp? He's a he's a, a uh, he's a Tokiko simp, and he's really uh -huh. pissed off that uh, she likes Kazuki and not him. Uh, his Busarinkin is those gears. They're like chakrams, mm -hmm. and he can do some kind of cool shit with them. They're like automated, so he can throw them and like move them around in the air. 
but he can also like put them on his feet and ride them like blades and stuff. It's pretty cool. All right. Interesting. Interesting for a simp character. You know, it was a specific yeah. time where you needed a simp character to get angry at. Yeah, everyone had to have a simp character. He yeah. was he was okay. He as ended up being like the sidekick, but it didn't button, really do much. The butt monkey of sorts. Uh, next, we may as, let's let's talk about him because I keep staring at him. We'll talk about Moonface. Moonface. So Moonface is this the second in command man. of the uh, LXE. Which is the bad guys? Um, it is the League of Extraordinary Elects, and uh, they are basically the main bad guys. But you don't really find out about that until later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's the second in command of them for a while. He is a pure homunculus. He's not like part human or anything. So he's been fully transformed, hence his moon face. Yes, and why it's always looking to the side over here. Yes, and his Buso Renkin is called Satellite 30, which can split him into 30 separate bodies, and each head is a slightly different phase of the moon. So he has one head that's the new moon, so he's headless, and then he has one head that's the full moon, which is a complete round head, and then all the other heads in between are like vaguely differing phases of the moon. Gotcha. So he's full on the moon. He's all the moon stuff. Yes, one. and the best part is he has his only fight in the series is against Captain Bravo. <laughs> that actually seems like the perfect matchup, actually. <laughs> yes, it's good. Interesting. Uh, do you think that this character was based off of the McDonald's Mac Tonight Man? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's immediately what I thought they added. I'm like, they added fucking Mac Tonight to Booty Jams? What the hell's going on? And then I was like, oh, no, Moonface. And then I was like, okay, I'm just going to wait for Zen to explain to me Moonface. So if you don't know, uh, for the people who I guess who don't know who Mac Tonight is, because unfortunately there's a lot of people who don't know who Mac Tonight is and the people who think they do know Mac Tonight, um, they're, uh, uh, they know him for something else. Mac Tonight was the mascot in the 1980s for McDonald's, and he was a... Uh, Based off of the song Mac the Knife, the famous old old timey song about I think a killer killing a woman, because all songs in the nineteen fifties that were big were about killing women back in the day. It's just how it worked out for everyone. Um, he used to be everywhere. He used to be a huge McDonald's uh, mascot, and then I think they stopped doing Mac t- Tonight commercials uh, because I think people just got scared of mac no i think it's because of ronald mcdonald i assume oh no there was a, a lawsuit because the people who who were behind, who owned the rights to mac the knife were like you motherfuckers took our father's song and they just made a guy called mac tonight and then took his style of singing you can't just do that mcdonald's and their thing was like i guess we can't we're just gonna stop airing the commercial he's retired now and he basically remained unused until unfortunately sometimes racists took him and tried to make terrible racist things with him uh, that I won't mention because I think he oh. did. De- yeah, did you not know this? No, I didn't know any of this. I, I I can't say the name, but if you look up Moon and then give it a couple spaces and then look up Man, I can't say it specifically because they target videos on YouTube to just try and take it down. He was taken over and he's basically, it's, it's really bad shit. I recommend you not look it up. But they basically tried to make him a symbol for racism. Uh, which is really unfortunate because oh, now yeah. I think it's there's people who appropriated are appropriated by supremacists. Jesus Christ! Yes, and there's people who are big fans of Mac uh, Mac tonight who are like, "Fuck you guys! You can't just take our guy." <laughs> and I'm with them because Mac tonight was a really cool character and he had a lot of cool things. And it's actually shitty that people try and take him for the wrong thing. So all yeah, that it's came super shitty, unbelievably shitty. So. When I look at Moonface, that is exactly what um, the first thing that came into my head was Mac Tonight. <laughs> and I was wondering if he was based on him or not. Uh, I don't know if he... I think he did... There were Japanese commercials with him and stuff, so... I'll never know because I won't be able to ask the Rioni Kenshin guy. Because uh, usually if I... <laughs> I don't think I would be able to ever ask him in person, hey was uh, Moonface based off of Mac tonight. But I do like the design. I do like the idea of a Moon Man in general. And I'm glad that he's free, actually, so I can just have him. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. 
and anyone can get him. He's very he's very easy to get. So next, and this is the last of the free characters. His name is Victor Powered. Is that his uh, yes. Christian last name, Powered? Is it is, someone? in fact, his Christian last name. <laughs> yeah. All right. Tell he me about uh, that. he is a former alchemist warrior, so he used to be a good guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got killed. And they tried to bring him back to life with an experimental black Kakugane. But they didn't realize that the side effects of that effectively turn you into a monster. Um, Sort of like a super homunculus, kind of. He's still human, but the black Kakugane inside of him causes him to drain the life out of everything around him, basically. Um, And he's also strong as fuck. Is he the the last bad guy they have to fight? Or is it just one of the dudes that... Yeah, so he is the he is the big bad. He's the final enemy, but he ends on good terms with the main guy. So, in the very beginning of the series, Kazuki gets his heart gush, like gashed out by a homunculus, mm-hmm. and Tokiko saves him by replacing his heart with a Kakugane. Um, so that's why his weapon is called Sunlight Heart because he's using his heart to fight, basically. Um, it turns out later on that the one that they put in was a black one that was being muted. So Kazuki starts turning into a monster too. He has a lot of big emotional fights when everyone except for Tokiko turns on him, including Captain Bravo. Um, Man, not Captain Bravo. I'd be devastated. Yeah. There's a Captain Bravo is really good. There's a ton of good shit with him in it. But eventually, uh, Papillon finds a way to cure him by making a white Kakagane to counter out the to like nullify the black one and turn it back into a regular one. Um, and Kazuki makes this promise that he will fight with them to stop Victor, and then he'll use the white Kakagane on himself afterward to turn back into a person. So they take the first white Kakagane they have to use on Victor, and that is what the ultimate attack for Kazuki and Tokiko is, the thing where they're both holding the lance together. Mm-hmm. Um, they use that to implant the white Kakagane into Victor, but it doesn't work because his has progressed too far. And so then they have the best scene in all of Buso Renkin, where uh, Kazuki grabs Tokiko's hands that are holding onto this lance because they're like way up in the air, like he can fly with it basically because it can mm-hmm. shoot energy out of it. Yeah. Um, and he grabs her hands and throws her off uh, of the lance, so it's just him and Victor. And then he goes into his monster mode too, and he rockets both him and Victor to the moon, Fuck. away from everyone else, uh, intending to sacrifice himself. Um, you because know, everyone else basically is dying. Damn. You know I love moon shit, Zen. Anytime yeah. the and then there's, is related There's to a the really moon. great ending bit where, like, everyone's just pissed off at him. Basically, they did it. Like, Tokyo's in tears after they catch her. Uh, mm-hmm. So she's, like, weeping on the ground. The simp guy is, like, screaming at him that, uh... How dare you? How dare he make her cry, Yeah. And it's then Papillon, it, it, the chapter ends on like a nightmare face from him saying that now there's no one alive that knows his real name anymore. Uh, but they do end up saving him in the future. Okay, they eventually get him off the moon. <laughs> yeah, so the, the monster mode makes it so they don't need to breathe. Oh. So they're, they're okay on the moon, basically. So they're kind of just fighting each other uh, infinitely on the moon, like forever. <laughs> Um, like the third Okage with the Orochimaru's arms. You're yeah, basically. Fighting each other. They're, they're just fighting each other on the moon forever, pretty much. Um, and then eventually they they do a rescue to, to get him off the moon. And him and Victor kind of have like a, a heart-to-heart moment where Victor's kind of like, yeah, I kind of already lost everything by being like a crazy monster man. Uh, my life is fucked. Yours doesn't have to be. So I'm going to... Because Victor's ability is to control gravity. Um, so his Busoriken is like an axe. I think it's called Fatal Attraction. And it, it manipulates gravity. So he's like, they're not going to be able to get to the moon. And I'm not able to send you back to Earth. But what I can do is I can launch your ass into space. And hope that they catch you. <laughs> uh, which, they, which they do. And Tokiko does grab him. Uh, and they get him back to Earth. It's very cute. It's a very nice ending of it all. Damn, that's cool. So, yeah, it, it, that's basically... Is there any other Buso Rankin dudes that they can add? By the, that's the last of the free-to-play characters, but is that... And is there any other characters they could add from the series? Other than... Oh, yeah, there's a ton. There's um, still tons? Okay. They can add in Victor's wife and daughter. 
Um, they could add in Papillon's grandfather, uh, Dr. Butterfly is his name. Um, they could obviously add in Kazuki and his monster mode. They haven't done that yet. Oh, that's true. And then there's like there's this assassination team that comes after Kazuki when Gota teams up with them. Uh, and they could add in those guys. Most of them are kind of forgettable. Like one of their Busa Renkins is two robot attack dogs. It's weird. <laughs> um, but there's one really cool dude who's like the opposite of Captain Bravo, where his where Captain Bravo's Busa Renkin is the ultimate defense. This guy's is the ultimate offense, and he's basically like a human napalm bomb. Like he's constantly on fire when he uses it, and like his whole body is made of fire. Cool. Pretty good. I thought you meant opposite as in his name. His name was like Admiral Coward. The no, opposite, no, he just said, the opposite of no. Captain he just Bravo. he goes by his normal name. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. All right, cool. That's the last of the free to play characters. Let's actually get into the characters who are in the game and have abilities to them. So you already kind of explained the backstory because he, she is related to uh, Shushe. Why don't you tell us about Oka over here? What does she do? Uh, she is a yellow unit. Is that right? Yes. Mm, yes. She is a yellow unit. She is ultimate attack. Inflict 300 damage to one enemy, and if they are inflicted by bleed, uh, do an additional 220, so 520%. For two turns, boost the attack of all balanced class members on your team by 7. Buddy skill, convert a random bubble to a skill. Convert Convert four random bubbles to yellow, two blocks to yellow. For two turns, boost the attack of all yellow team members by five or 16% in the tower. For two turns, boost the ultimate attack of yellows by five uh, four or 16% in the tower. And for one turn, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill for yellow team members by one. Uh, in the tower, it is for two turns, reduced by four. Mm. Okay. So she's uh, kind of a PvP assist, more or less. Yeah, and then her really passive is reduce bleed by 4550. When attacked, the following turn boost her ultimate by 25%. Interesting. Yeah, she really feels built for the tower. Just, but in a specifically all yellow team, or at least two yellow teams as the, end, uh, the ending bit there. Um, huh, how do you feel about her? She's pretty good. Um, she she's definitely built for the limited. Her, she's a hundred percent just there to support them. Mm -hmm. Like her ultimate boosts balance class team members, uh, which they are. I mean, she is too, but so are they. Uh, and then her entire passive is like buff the fuck out of yellows. Mm -hmm. um, so she's really good. I think I think she's super good in the tower because like a sixteen percent attack and ultimate for uh, yellow. Is good because you know he ain't kill are yellow yes. and they're super good right now. Super crazy good, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I think that she's solid. Is she a must-have? Probably not, but mm. I think she's good. Some nice utility. Also, her ult is pretty powerful for a non-limited. Five twenty with bleed is a lot for a non-limited character. Yeah, and with the ability to go stronger, and so she can also be used in. Um non-tower related things if you need her to attack especially because anti-bleed mm -hmm. is so is just not on a lot of units right now we need more units with no it's not because that shit will tear you up when you're fighting the harder stuff <laughs> bleed damage is no joke uh it also is nice that she has something that converts block bubbles as well because that's actually I, I i didn't know this did you know that your your score is lowered for how many uh block uh block bubbles you have left over I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Ka Kaze had to tell me. He's like, yeah, that's why a lot of the higher PvP people like using characters that like remove block bubbles because block bubbles lower your score at the end. Like depending on how many I you did have not know on your that. board. I was like, I didn't know that shit that's... either. Most of the time, I just blow up the entire board because I run Hiei and Killa. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's also. But what I you do. know, that is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, for the people who are deep into the, the micromanaging aspect to get as much points as you can squeeze out of there, it is nice to have that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next, we got... Let's move on to Captain Bravo. Tell us what Captain Bravo does. Captain Bravo is a green unit. His ultimate is 110% of his max HP as damage to all enemies. 
and recover 1,000 HP or 25,000 in the tower. And he removes one uh, ultimate attack damage boost from all enemies. His buddy skill is convert a random to a skill. Convert a total of four red, green, blue, and yellow heart and block bubbles to rainbow. So he can just basically convert anything to rainbow. Mm -hmm. For three turns, boost the attack of balance class team members by 26%. And for two turns, inflict 21% attack down to all enemies. And then his uh, passive, reduce the number of skill bubbles required to create a skill by one. Reduce the number of turns of weakening for him by two. And when he is attacked on the following turn, recover 26, 20 at the end of the turn. All right. um, He's okay. Um, yeah. His buddy skill is once again catered entirely around the, the limited from this event because they are balanced and he is once again there to support balanced. But uh, I believe... Let me check something real quick to make sure I'm not being a dumbass. I'm not. Uh, he is green, and the high Q duo that is very common as a finisher in PvP yes. is also balanced, so he nice. will support them as well. That works out. Yeah, I kind of like uh, what he's got going here. Though I do think that... I think he's much more PVE focused yeah, was, than Oka is. I was is. about to say the twenty one percent attack down for with uh, for two turns is pretty damn nice because. Um, Sometimes there's some bosses that literally just do so much damage to you <laughs> that you just need some breathing room. And he's able to give that breathing room, but while also creating um, rainbow bubbles and giving you a skill bubble at the same time. And if, depending on uh -huh. your team, you could make advantage of, you could take advantage of the increasing the attack of balanced class members as well. So very nice in that. I definitely think uh in your same thought it's the same thing where i think he's much better in pv especially because he also has a aoe attack which is uh -huh. mostly really used for um and i hope you know that that ultimate attack name is actually what it's called in these series as well is it actually called instant death bravo punch yes it's a great name fantastic ass name so i like what he's kind of going here it's a real damn shame that i am tapped out of everything because i would have loved to potentially go for captain bravo but i'm gonna have to hope that he shows up later on or maybe he's included in the um uh the wide the thing they're going to be doing near anniversary where they're going to add more characters to the select a five ticket maybe he hopefully will get added to that if i'm yeah i'm um, i'm holding on to all of my stuff waiting for that yeah wait and see you already have basically everyone from buso rank in at least one copy right i have everybody yeah yeah, were you able to, how how hard was that experience by the way because uh it was you, actually not that bad. I got super lucky on the the non-limited banner. Um I got everybody in like three pulls. All right, that's not bad cuz I was about to say yeah. that's basically like less than a one rotation, right? Cuz it's four, four it, it, it was uh was it a full rotation or was it not? I think it was a full rotation. I had a dead one. Then I got one that had both um, Oka and Papillon, and then I got a dead one, and then I got Captain Bravo. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Getting all three in one rotation is fucking amazing, actually. Yeah. Because usually what happens is that you always end up not getting the one you want. The one that you over. want, yeah. Yeah, so if you're not careful, you could end up spending way more trying to chase the one character that you're missing, as opposed to the limited that you can just super easily get at the end. So it kind of depends on your luck on that one, but it's good to hear that you had some luck on that one. Because I know that you were... I think it was not even like... Uh, I asked you a week ago, so do you have them? He's like, I already have them all. Yeah, I got them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I got them. No. I got Busa Rinkin. The yeah, next thing is Hitman Reborn, which I don't give a shit about, so I can skip all of it. So I wasn't missing Busa Rinkin. That new... That Suna, though. Suna and Reborn. That fucking Reborn just, like, watches in the... That little corner... Because have you seen that old animation, by the way, of Suna and Reborn? I have, yeah. The one they tweeted out? Yes. Reborn is on the corner just watching with a smile, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> He's just, like, looking at it, just like, yeah, I'm just kind of here for it. It's, like, the most, like, because uh, he only really does the thing where he shoots them with a dying will bullet. And then after that point, it's literally all Suna fucking them up. But it's really funny that they just have Reborn watching on the corner, and you have, like, this tiny baby on the corner watching this massacre happen right in front of him. Oh, man. 
But yeah, lucky for you, you don't care that much about uh, Reborn, even though, uh, unfortunately for me, I really care about Reborn, and I was like, god damn it. I really got screwed over by uh, uh, Gint- by, the Ginto- by the Gintama duo, so I was like... Oh, oh I know, man. That that I had to get them too, so I'm pretty tapped myself. Yeah, I have like I'm- 2k left right now. I'm barely reaching 2k and I don't think I may I'll maybe do one multi for reborn and see my luck there because that's how I was able to get uh, Tanjiro and Kiyu was off of one multi randomly but we'll see because it's tough uh, the follow up stuff is pretty tough but I think after that I should be fine if I can survive through that I think I'm pretty good up until anniversary I think I think there's potentially summer might be something crazy actually that's not true because 1010 might be coming and everyone at this point is wondering what 1010 could mean so who knows and I think the basketball boys are also coming sometime in summer right yes not just, not uh, I don't month, remember but... when I think they said August or no August is the 1010 August is um, 10, 10. I think it's before 10, 10. Maybe it's September. Maybe it's September then. Hmm. We'll I'm sure I c- it's – you talk and I'll look it up because it's not that hard to find it. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, but just I'll to just say in general, through. it's it's a long ways to save till anniversary and there's plenty of series that could be coming out from what I remember on the list. There was a lot of stuff that I like. And it's also a real shame because I like Reborn in general and that final arc, which I will explain next week when the – not next week or whenever the hell the info comes out for those characters, I will explain to Zen about them. Because it's a really cool arc. It's the final. It just arc. it just says autumnal. Okay. All right. We'll so out. autumn sometime, which is probably like probably after August. Do you see uh, on I there who's next after Reborn? It's September twenty twenty two for this. Uh, Reborn is the June event. Yep. So June is going to be starting off with Hitman Reborn, followed up by the Prince of Tennis. There we go. Followed up by a June Brides campaign. Don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, then July, we go into a summer event, followed up by One Piece. Uh, a celebration for the One Piece 25th anniversary. Yeah, there's a lot of One Piece characters that could potentially be. Yeah. Did we still, there's still One Piece characters that we don't have in the Taiwanese version that I'm like, oh shit. If they brought those over, I'd actually be kind of screwed. And then there's also characters in Wano. <laughs> Where I'd be like, shit, if this Uh-oh. character got released, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, there's like, oh, you, there's no winning with being a One Piece fan. Because either you, they have so many characters to release and sometimes they don't pick the right ones. So I have to yeah, hope that they fair. miss on this one. I'm like praying to God that please miss on this one my hands. And then chances are it's also going to be a duo unit or a transforming unit. Like, oh man, there's so much stuff they could do. Probably. So, so let me ask you this, uh, man, now that you mentioned the August one piece one. actually goes crazy. Um, yeah, August is 1010, yeah. then there's a Black Clover one. Mm-hmm. And then there's a campaign, what is 1010, and an update that is new elements that to the game that will be related to the That's 1010 right. event. That's so right. I know a lot, the prevailing theory is that that is Jujutsu Kaisen, because 1010 mm-hmm. is Juju. And the thought is that the new element will be domain expansion, which will be like a battlefield altering thing. Obviously, it won't be called domain expansion, but it will be a mechanic that, yeah, it'll be a mechanic that does something, and the first thing that does it will be domains. They'll call it uh, playing their field spell. So we'll get a Yugi who plays (laughs) Yami. That would actually be pretty cool. And, you know, right after the 1010, which I I hope is Jujutsu Kaisen, is another Gintama event. That's right. Yeah, there's a lot of things to say before. September is Gintama and the sports stuff. So it's Gintama, and then it's right into sports. So okay. Kuroko and Haikyuu will be coming yeah. in September. And then it's anniversary, right? Aniv, it, 4.5 Aniv is in September, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. after September, we have World Trigger, an unknown event, Madaka Box, an unknown crossover event, and then whatever the fuck Captain Plan is. Mm-hmm. And we also have technically part six characters coming at some point. We, we don't know when. Yeah, just it just says, they just says said that vaguely, we, we will like, be hey, getting "quote unquote" later in the year. They said uh, we'll be fuckers. getting. Yeah, <laughs> there's when... two new series coming. One is Magical Patissier, P- P- mm-hmm. Kosaki Chan. Yep. Uh, our written first, by the uh, person from We Never Learn. Yes, our first Jump Plus and series then, as well. Yes, it is. And then we also have the second one, which is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Six: Stone Ocean. A lot of things to look forward to, man. Man, 
Yeah, it's going to be a busy fucking year. Yes. I also realized that I was trying to think of what field spell Yugi played, and I realized I was thinking of Sealed of Orikalkos. But he never does that in the manga, so we can't have it in Jampudi. <laughs> or is it? Is it actually based, is Jampudi based off of just Shonen Jump in general, or is it also... I assume so. Because if so, then hey, whatever. We can have darts, and we can have the Seal of Orikalkos, and we can have... All the every basically all the monsters he played <laughs> normally except for now they're powered by the sealed. Even though that is I the I think it's manga only now that you mentioned that because we have we don't have any spin off Yu Gi Oh characters. No, we don't. We don't have any of those. No GX or anything like that. That's a shame because they should add Jaden. They should give us the give him his other. Jaden would be so good. Give Jayden us manga so Jaden. <laughs> That'd be I, that's good enough. I'll give give me give me a Jaden that summons for fucking what is his. Um, Str- Stratos is one of his manga ones, right? Uh, yeah. So the Terra manga Firma. ones are the yeah Terra Firma, Stratos, uh, Inferno, Heat, Lady Heat, Ocean, Woodsman, and then he moves into the masked heroes instead of moving into the Neo Spatians like in the anime. Oh, is a uh, Dark Law in there? Uh, uh, I don't know if their Dark Law is in there specifically. Specifically, um, because if I was just, I was about to say Muso Jade and Dark Law. Yeah, it it is in fact in the anime or the manga. All right, then put him in there. <laughs> give us Dark Law in two different places. <laughs> give me him and Master Duel. Then also give nah, him. Nah, if if Jaden were to ever get added and they made it the manga version of him, it would just be Terra Firma that he's it with for be. sure. Yeah, it'd have to be Terra Firma. Strato says his attacking one. Man, what does Cyrus use in the manga? Uh, I think he still uses roids. Really? They didn't give him anything better? Because <laughs> I know Alexis, uh, they gave her better cards instead of the Cyber uh, No, Rangers. Alexis uses her anime deck. Um, Doesn't she also she have uses like, like ice an, ladies? She does, but that's the deck that she uses when she's evil in the anime. Oh, she okay. uses like white Spoilers knight me. stuff, like ice stuff. Mm. Um, See, I never got that far. Is it in still Europe. roids? Yeah, he still uses Viacroids. Actually, no, you're right. Alexis does get a bit... I think it's like the same style of deck, but I think that it's not exactly the same. They're definitely ladies, but she got an upgrade because from what I remember, because I remember playing Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day, I actually did a sealed tournament back when the set released firsthand. So I used her specific monsters and I used Jaden's Elemental Heroes when they were fresh. And let me tell you, even in the format of a limited sealed only, meaning you could only use the units in there, those units blowed. I think the only one that is good is the one that, um, is it Blader? No, it's, no, it's the one, it wasn't even released in the first set, it was released later. Because they, they both used normal monsters, I think the Cyber Blader is a normal monster, and Jaden's entire uh, heroes are. Yes. Everyone but yep. Wildheart and Bubble Man are normal monsters. Um... Yeah, it took a while for Alexis to get the good version of her Cyber Angel ladies because eventually they really they gave her Tutu and stuff like that. And I remember Tutu being pretty all right for what she was compared to everyone else. I remember her having yep. slight play for 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 side deck options. I think, and the same thing goes for her other. Yeah, I cyber. think she, hers is like she has some kind of way to direct attack. I think. Yeah, she got eventually a better stuff, but those that version of like the original Cybers were not very good. It took a no, while. No, it was literally her. like. Cyber later. It was like Etwal Cyber, I think, was yeah. all she had. Until they gave her her ritual spells, and then those rituals yeah. were eventually taken by Drauton, and here we are today, everyone. And that's why Ben 10 is, <laughs> is limited. Or banned, depending yep. on certain formats. But anyway, let's move on to uh, Papalion. Did I say his name right? I think I screwed it up. Papillon. Papillon. There you go. Thank you very much. Papillon. Tell us what Papillon does, then. He is pretty cool he's a bomb unit like uh bakugo and usui Mm -hmm. he does 400 damage to one enemy and places a bomb on all enemies that explodes after one turn and does 450 percent damage and for two turns he buffs his own ultimate attack by 16 percent whenever he uses an ultimate his buddy skill is to convert a random bubble to a skill Convert four random bubbles to rainbow for two turns to 18,000 bleed per turn, 60,000 in the tower. When the target has bleed, if you connect one or more bubbles with this unit's buddy that are the same as their own color, at the end of that turn, inflict an additional 11,000 damage. And his 
passive is to reduce the number of bubbles required to negate bind by 10. And when you connect two or more bubbles with him, boost his attack by 22% for that turn. Hmm. Okay. He's pretty neat. I like. I mean, he's fun. I don't know that he's super great, but he's probably fun. works out. I like using him. Find in the PVE environment. Bind units are always nice to have because, like I said, in those bind is definitely one of the most annoying things to deal with in PVE. Basically, everything is annoying to with to deal with in PVE. So you should really get these units who specifically counter all that stuff. It's there by design. Um, but yeah, seems pretty cool. I like what I like his look. Seems like a pretty cool dude, even though you told me he ate his uh, brother, which is probably not the coolest thing. But you also said he was rich, so you know, eat the rich. You know, if anything, he's eat the rich. Literally, he's, he's ahead of the game, so I, I support him and his endeavors. <laughs> he took it seriously. Finally, someone joins the cause. Then <laughs> glad to see it. <laughs> you have it from the inside. comrade Papillon. Comrade Papillon, welcome to the resistance. <laughs> There's a really good running gag in Busa Renkin, uh, where Papillon keeps going to fucking McDonald's, and they're all <laughs> horrified because he looks like that. Like he doesn't like wear normal clothes; he just looks like that. Uh huh. Um, and he keeps going to McDonald's, and it's the same poor girl that's always working the counter every time he goes to McDonald's. Um, and then eventually, him he meets up with Captain Bravo, Tokiko, and Kazuki, mm -hmm. and they're like they're like uh, tenuously allying. And they're like, all right, let's sit down and talk about this. And they all go to McDonald's. <laughs> and it's Captain Bravo and Papillon in McDonald's at the same time. And that poor girl is like, please fire me. She's like the original uh, girl from Chainsaw Man. The one, the one yeah. who yeah. really doesn't want to be here for any of this. Yeah. That's pretty great. Everything you you describing this sounds great. <laughs> Everything about Fusa Riga that I've heard it sounds amazing. All right, let's it's go really on. good. I think you'd enjoy it. I think so too. We'll we'll I'll, I'll we'll see if by next week if I have read it. It is very short. I could knock out a yeah. It's eighty chapters. Somebody. You could yeah. Yeah, you should. Be I, I'm not like one of those. Clear dudes. that pretty quick. I'm not like one of those dudes who goes like, man, I need to read a chapter in an hour. I'm like, nah, dude. I nah yeah. for that shit. Yeah, I have burn very, it. Burn it fast. Yeah, very fast reading comprehension is my gift and my curse. Let's go on to the last unit, Kazuki and Tokiko. Uh, all right. They are a yellow. They are balanced, as we've said a hundred times. Mm -hmm. Their ultimate is 516 to one enemy. And if the enemy has a barrier, do an additional 140%. At the start of the next turn, convert a random bubble to a skill bubble with 20% base damage. Mm. And for two turns, boost his ultimate attack damage by 20%. For one turn, if this unit is attacked, recover uh, 20,000 HP in the tower, 1,000 in PvE. Hmm. Buddy skill, convert one random bubble to a skill. Convert a total of five red, green, and heart bubbles to yellow. For two turns, guard 21% of all damage received for yellow team members. And for three turns, boost the normal attack damage of yellow team members by 25%. And their passive is reduce bleed received by 4720. Boost this unit's attack by 16%. Before this unit's turn, convert a green bubble to a blue column paint bubble. And if the enemy is balanced, boost their damage dealt by an additional 20%. Okay. I really like units who leave behind a skill bubble <laughs> after they do their turn. Yes, I do too. Uh, it was really underwhelming at first, because mm -hmm. the first one to do it, I think, was Julius from uh, Black Clover. Uh, yes. And his is 10%, and I don't think he really offered anything else either when he did it. Uh, ever since then, they've started making it better and better. Um, like, Kenshin is really good, because he buffs other stuff as well, and he leaves that behind. Um, yeah, they're they're good. I, I love units that do that. Like, the, the last unit that did that was the um, Deku and All Might. And they're super good. Isn't doesn't Caesar and no they don't do that they don't leave behind they have the other thing that would be crazy no they have if they the did that. the charge the power charge yeah 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 they have it Yuna has it funny enough two yellow units have it so you in theory will have if you did an all yellow or you did a bunch of yellow teams you would have constant you would have more than the average amount of skill bubbles because you'd go and you'd start with Yuna 
and then you'd go, oh, you start with them, and they would have a skill bubble at the end of their turn. And then by the time you get to Killua and Hie, then you would have basically passed on this one skill bubble all the way up until the end, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> I also that think that is a little crazy. Yeah. Also, their specific like healing thing. I think yellow might be unkillable in some scenarios because they just heal so much. Right, because there's the other limited from, what's his name? I cannot believe it. it's the really good yellow healer guy. The siren guy. Yes, the si- the guy from Siren. You have the cowboy girl. You have the um, guy from Bleach. Who I'm not remembering the flower man. Who I'm not remembering. Mayuri. Mayuri. There's so many yellow units that specifically heal, and then also if you get hit by him them you get to heal off of that too and then you also have you know who has so much defense yep <laughs> it feels like you would yeah, actively yellow be... is like the the wall which is funny because yellow is lightning in this game i think mm-hmm. uh which is traditionally not depicted as defensive in any way no and then at the same time while you're doing all that if you actually build an all yellow team and you use the yellow um uh fucking what is it called the legendary skill i don't remember from what series i think it's from one piece the one that just summons non-stop yellow uh stuff on it but it's so crazy good and it's so easy to fill up that in theory by the time you get to Killua and hie they will be so crazy powered up by this one yellow thing that their attack will just go to un- unassailable amounts and all you have to do is kind of build up a little bit in the beginning and to get them there so I think I might actually try and do that and use like High Dio as the leader, put uh, maybe Kazuki or Yuna second, whichever one I don't put second, put third, and then put Hie and Kilo in the back. Yeah, I've, I've been wanting to do that for a while, but I don't have the Dio to fully realize the combo because if you have Dio, then you can do basically a nonstop loop up until the final turn. So you really just need to survive, and there's so many ways to survive with Yellow. You would basically be an unkillable tank. I think the only thing that could, in theory, stop you is a very strong green, and they'd have to be crazy strong, or maybe um, a very strong uh, Roger. But I can't really think of too many things that would be good. You'd be able to heal off a lot of that damage, though. So, be interesting to see. But yeah, I like I like what they've got going here. I can't have I tried one multi to try for them because I was like, damn it, it'd be nice to have, but I couldn't get them. Zen obviously has them, and you've been using them, and how you've been how liking them so far. Uh, I really like them. I think they're super good. Um, they're weirdly like similar, but not really to the Deku and All Might, and it's kind of annoying. Um, I'm gonna pull them up, and so I can frame my complaint properly um so they have the same more or less um ultimate as deku and all might so their ultimate is 516 if there's a barrier do an additional uh 140 deku and all might's is 525 and if there's a barrier do an additional 145 Mm -hmm. um they both make a bubble for 20% base damage on the next turn. They both buff ultimate... Well, no, okay. Kazuki and Tokiko buff ultimate by 20%. Deku and All Might buff ultimate by 26%. Mm. And then uh, Kazuki and Tokiko recover 20,000 HP, whereas Deku and All Might reduce damage by 8,000. So like Deku and All Might get more damage for a difference of 12,000 healing, which is not that much uh, mm-hmm. of healing. And then um, they both reduce bleed, but Deku and All Might reduce it by more. And uh, Kazuki and Tokiko add 6% more attack on their passive. And then instead of getting the shoot thing, what's it called? Where you Uh, throw the bubbles on the board that do fixed damage afterward? I call it the Super Vegito mechanic. I don't remember what it's actually called. Deku and All Might get the Super Vegito mechanic, and Kazuki and Tokiko just get an additional 20% damage to balanced characters. So it feels like they made them kind of an underwhelming uh, variant right after we got Deku and All Might, so that's a little annoying, uh, a but bit, I do think yeah. that they're still very good. Yeah, that is a little bit annoying when you bring it out like that, especially because they're also duo units. I really like duo units. I think they're cool, and from what you've mentioned of this from this series, it actually makes a lot of sense for this uh, limited to be the way they are but it is kind of annoying to be like well 
the problem is is that you should also try and make those limiteds different in some way. So yeah, it's just like why are they so similar? similar? Yeah. But like Kazuki and Togeko are like toned down by comparison. It's it's just yeah. like what the fuck? What are it, you doing? It's like um, it's like All Might and Deku are Coke, and this here is Coke with some grape in it. Yeah, it's like uh, Coke versus Cherry Coke. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's basically the same, a different flavor. It, depending on, it's very hard to compare to the original Coke because it's so good just by itself. So you have to be willing to, if you want this flavor, you kind of have to be going like, well, it's not exactly Coke. It's not as good, but I still like it and still enjoy it, and it's still perfectly fine for what it is. And that's kind of what the situation is here. Yeah, <laughs> like I think that they're still really good. Like. uh the Deku and All Might are, I think, they're ranked number three in PvP right now for blue. Uh, yeah, they are. And I think Kazuki and Tokyo will probably end up SS tier for PvP as well, because they're borderline the same character. They're just toned down a little bit in an obnoxious way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that is definitely annoying. And for the series, like... For series like Booster Rankin, you should try and do your best to try and be as different as possible, I feel. Because, you know, there's not going to, it's going to be a while before the next Booster Rankin. If there was going to be another thing, chances are it would be a, I don't know if it would even be another limited from it. It'd be like a Musoi from them if you're going to do that. Like to do the, the big, the ultimate form of Kazuki that you were talking about. Like that seems like. Yeah, you could the, do something like that. Yeah, that seems like that's where they would kind of go. And so for just because this is what my general feeling is for units for series that aren't like One Piece or Naruto or one of the other Black Clover for whatever reason, uh, <laughs> they're not like constantly bringing them out every couple months. It's very much a when we get them, it's hype, but don't expect them all the time kind of deal. I yeah, find, basically. Know, <laughs> Prince of Tennis might be the one series that it's kind of like that because Prince of Tennis has two limiteds and it's about to get its third limited and it doesn't have that many units compared to it. It has a very similar amount of units to Buso Rankin right now, actually. But it, it took a while to get the next limited, if you want to see what I'm saying. Like, what was the last Prince yeah. of Tennis limited? Was it the... Well, yeah, Super Prince of Tennis Luke? was... Uh, no, I think it was Tezuka. Let's see, 2018... I think. 2020, yeah, so Tezuki... Yeah. So they got their first one in 2018. Two years later, they got their second one, and then now they're getting their their third one. Two, two years, years later, later again. Again, <laughs> yes. So intervals of two years later, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So you should try your best uh, to make them as good as possible from the go. That's my general Yeah, and I mean, like this. Um, Prince of Tennis is like the legacy uh, sports manga as well, so... That makes sense, I suppose, that there's they're getting a steady supply of the good shit. Yeah. They don't have Slam Dunk, so they're like, we will gladly give it to Prince of Tennis every two years. <laughs> for whatever reason, we don't have Slam Dunk for some dumb reason. Uh, but yeah, and I think actually, funny enough, is Reborn kind of like that too? Yeah, Reborn was Reborn like Reborn has like, Reborn's one of those ones that's almost like MHA, where it's like, yeah, we got limiteds, but they're all the same guy. <laughs> They are the, all the same guy. Uh, and even you got Bongolo two Primo, limiteds and a Muso, and both of the limiteds are uh, Suna. And now you're getting a third unit that also has Suna in it. <laughs> Suna and Reborn. And then Giotto is his great, great uh, Italian grandfather. So basically Suna. <laughs> <laughs> who, who they yeah, make pretty in the much. Of very clear. The reason that Suna's kind of picked is because he's very similar to Primo. <laughs> and he looks very similar. So... But yeah, the, but their the steady supply is like 2020 is when they got their first one. And then the next one, 2021, and now it's 2022. And they're about to get their next one. But they got their Muso in the in-between, which was in 2021. So that feels like that would probably be somewhere along the line. So basically, I don't know when the next... Because let me see, when was the, when was the first Muso ranking person released? A while ago, wasn't it? Like a year ago, maybe? Uh... Tokiko was the first one, and she came out on, yeah, some some sort of ladies' event last year. She was like a, it was like an event where it was like not Valentine's Day, but something similar. I feel like. Yes, I would say so. I wasn't playing at the time, but that sounds right because there there was a lady event that almost got me to play, and she might have been a part of that one. Yeah, it it 
Oh no, it was Valentine's. She was February of 2021, so it was Valentine's event. Okay, okay. But it'll take a while to get more dudes. So her ultimate. Have you seen the original Tokiko's ultimate? It's so fucking cool. I don't think so. I have her, but I don't think I've seen. The... You should. You should watch that in the gallery if you haven't. It's fucking right. awesome. I will. I'll check. I'll take a check of it. I'll check it. I'll check it out. But yeah, that is it for what we got here. Those are all the new units. Like we said, reborn is coming up. There's very few days left of Boozer Rankin, so if you're a big fan of Boozer Rankin, go in there and get your dudes. Um, they seem solid enough in various ways, so you will be pretty well off. But in general, I'm pretty sure always... I'm I'm pretty sure I'm the only Boozer Rankin fan on the planet. But if I'm not, Godspeed. <laughs> I was gonna say Boozer Rankin's strongest soldier, but I don't think you could say that. <laughs> even <laughs> I don't think you should problem it's, it's very weird no we've, i'm not we've, gonna no, we can't yeah. we've avoided saying it you know why <laughs> we're not gonna bring it up here because then here's it enough but you should know why yeah <laughs> he would we're have gonna, apprehensions yeah. <laughs> damn this episode has everything we got the taking of <laughs> we got so many very topics that we can't talk about anyway we will be back hopefully maybe next week to talk about reborn and i'll get to explain more reborn stuff now i get to tell I think the next, what is the specific, what is it specifically called? The arc. It is the final arc of Reborn that they are doing. It is the big one. It is the, the Kyoko Hitman Reborn Feature Festival based on the Curse of the Rainbow arc. And have you seen the teaser image for it, by the way, Zen? I have not. All right. I'm about to link it to you because I think it's great. Um, This is... <laughs> This arc is going to be so fun to explain. Because <laughs> this is the arc where all the babies form together to have a war. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, so remember how I told you that the, there's a whole bunch of different... There's seven rainbow pacifiers and each one of them is held by a baby? What the fuck? Yeah, look forward to that next week as we talk about it. We can't talk about it here because we don't have enough time. Until next week, everyone, <laughs> we will see you guys next time. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. And we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.